I know that maybe sounded provocative, and believe me, I get that. Shameful and unbecoming. This is Wretched Radio, reprobation and the sovereignty of God. Studying these big ideas helps us to harmonize the way that God presents himself in the Bible in light of the accusation that God must be evil because evil exists. Wrong, wrong, and wrong. As we have established, courtesy of Dr. Peter Sammons in his book, Reprobation and God's Sovereignty, God ordains everything, but he doesn't cause everything. He doesn't cause anybody to sin. He doesn't cause wicked dictators to do horrific things to the masses. And yet he ordains it. God uses sin sinlessly. Let's see if we can figure out how he does that by studying the subject of causality. We've got to dive in deep into this. How does God cause things? So we can safely say that God is causing, now just be patient with me on this. We can say that God is causing evil, but he's not doing the evil. And there is a part of causality that releases him from the assault that he is evil because he quote, causes evil. Now, I know that maybe sounded provocative, and believe me, I get that. But let us understand that there are different levels of causality. There's a primary level, that would be God, but there are secondary causes. In this instance, it would be us. And as we go about the business of causing evil, even though that God in a primary sense has caused evil, we have secondarily caused the evil, and we're the ones responsible for it because we did it. God doesn't make you do evil. That's where we where, where we get a lot of help because we hear God causes evil, then therefore he does the evil. No, 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 no. God causes it, but there are secondary causes, human beings, and therefore God is not guilty of doing those things because he has not made people do them. And yet, he's created all of the circumstances and all of the ability for people to do those things without actually being responsible for their evil behavior. Let's dive into that, shall we? Ezekiel 14, 9. That's right, the Old Testament. If the prophet is persuaded so that he speaks a word, It is I, the Lord, who have persuaded that prophet. We got to dive into that because there are a lot of people who would try to wrangle that away because that indicates that God is, wait a second. So when I say something, the Lord made me say it? No, the Lord caused it without causing you. He causes everything, but you also cause stuff. And when it's bad, it's on you. Seemingly difficult passages like this. Some people doubt, distort, downplay, or outright deny when it plainly said what it plainly says. Frankly, such response to scripture is shameful and unbecoming of any Christian. <laughs> Wowza. We must instead give God's word the serious consideration it deserves. In this case, the apparent predicament is obvious. How can God be said to persuade a false prophet to lie to someone when passages like James 1.13 says God cannot tempt anyone and Numbers 23.19 says God cannot lie. In light of God's holiness, to what extent is his involvement with sin? Let's dive into our categories of causation. There are three. Ultimate cause. The ultimate cause of every action that occurs in the world is God who providentially, there's our word, governs all actions for his purposes. Two, there's a proximate cause. The proximate cause of an action is the agent, human or otherwise, who influences, directs, or enables an an, an action. So God, we know clearly from the Bible, is in control of everything. Ephesians 1.11, Romans 11.36, but 
you have these individuals who also do things, the proximate cause. And then, thirdly, you have the efficient cause. The efficient cause of an action is the great human or otherwise, or the agent, human or otherwise, who directly carries out the action. So there's a slight distinction between two and three. The proximate cause is the agent who influences, directs, or enables an action. Efficient cause is the one who actually does it. That's that's a worthy distinction, and you'll see why in just a bit. Scripture indicates that sin does not occur outside of the ordained plan of God, who is the ultimate cause. There's our word. He's the ultimate cause. That's one of our categories and responsible for all things. But since Scripture says that both concurrent realities are true, that God ordained sin while remaining holy and unchangeable for sin, the need for theological categories of causation is established. Let's dive into an Old Testament verse. Aren't you glad we haven't unhitched it? 1 Kings 22, we see God using false prophets to lie to King Ahab. Ahab was another case of someone who preferred lying to telling the truth and wanted to try to leverage God for personal gain. After patiently enduring years of Ahab's evil, God was determined to bring about his downfall. Thus, the passage states that when Ahab sought prophetic counsel to determine whether or not he should go into battle, his 400 false prophets assured him of victory. What Ahab didn't know at the time, however, was that God had enticed these false prophets to lie to him. Look, that's hard. Look, that, 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 we have to acknowledge. Whew, that's hard. 400 liars? And God was behind it without being responsible for it. Exactly. That is the categorization of causation. We understand there's different categories. How did God do this? By enlisting the help of demons. Zoinks, Scoob. So now he's using, well, what would the demons be? Did the demons do the lying? No. They'd be the proximate cause, the one who enable or influence. But the efficient cause were the false prophets themselves. That is causation. And that means that God is not culpable for the wicked actions of demons or sinful human beings. He's the ultimate but he is not the proximate or the efficient cause of evil. Does that go down with you? Does that maybe help you? It should, because we see this over and over again in the Bible, that God uses sin sinlessly. Now, Peter Sammons, in his book titled Reprobation and God's Sovereignty, lists four causalities the way that God does this. So how, okay, so how does God do this without being guilty of this? Number one, there's the causality of divine abandonment. God just goes, I'm done. He withholds grace from people. And then terrible things happen. They're responsible. He isn't. There will be an unstated hardening of hearts. There will be a self-hardening of hearts. Remember Pharaoh self-hardening his heart, doing evil? God wasn't responsible, but he ordained it. There's evil people, the causality of personal agency. These are people who do their will instead of God's. There is the causality of evil spirits. There is the causality of general means. Here's the definition of that. When scripture states a general means, or it cannot simply be defined as any time God speaks about the execution of the decree or reprobation upon the non-elect without stating a direct agent involved. So there's just some stuff that the Bible just doesn't tell us what the proximate or efficient cause was. There is also the causality of non-personal agency. What in the world is that? Lying. It, it, it's, it's not telling the truth. Those are all of the ways that God ordains everything, operates the universe, but is not connected to the sin and the evil that people commit. He is 
guiltless in all of it, ordaining everything because that is how he operates the planet so that we can uphold the doctrine of sovereignty on the one hand and the doctrine of goodness of God on the other hand to come up with a theodicy to how to explain evil with a good God. Remember causality and categories of causality. God's the ultimate. There are proximate demons, lies, untruths, hardenings. And then there's the actual agent, the efficient agent that carries it out. And when that agent carries it out, even though God is the ultimate cause, he is not the one who causes it to happen in the sense that he's responsible for it. The agent who carries it out is. Was that a perfect presentation? I doubt it. It was intended to help us think through a deep issue, love our God more, and be able to defend the accusation that God must be evil because evil exists. This is Wretched Radio. Hey, if you would like to watch all four segments, not just one of Wretched Radio, you can do that at wretched.org. Hello, Maria. This is Todd Friel from your auto insurance company, noticing you're not taking advantage of any of our life insurance policies. Mm -hmm. <laughs> really? Well, really, you're not afraid to die. That's funny. Now listen to this clip from Paul Washer. I'm talking about you. So what do you think of that, Maria? 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 